In this video, I wanted to address the data entry into Minitab, as the more I'm talking with students, the more I'm finding this is where the point of confusion is. So the reason we have you put all 100 plus responses in a table does not mean a summary table. It means you take all the values and you type them in. So if I was in Minitab and I had surveyed the number of miles, I'm going to put my name next to it because I have to have my name in all the exports and you would enter all those values. You would not summarize them. You would copy and paste them from your survey if you had a survey you could do from SurveyMonkey. So I'm just going to enter some here so I can work with it. So with this in mind, yes and no questions or qualitative questions aren't going to work as visuals for the most part. A few of you I've talked to and I've walked you through um, how to do that process. So it's a little different. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and show you you have I miss some. Okay, so I'm copying and pasting all my data. I'm not counting them up. I'm not doing anything. Mini tab is nothing but raw data. So this is all of my raw data right here. Then I'm going to go to graphs and I'm going to decide, well, what's the most appropriate graph? If I'm wanting to show how frequently people have come and gone, I'm going to use a bar chart because a bar chart has a bar for the answer and how many times the answer occurs as the frequency. So I would want always a simple number of miles, even though it's not truly a categorical value. Here's my bar chart. 17 people said or 18 people said they go 10 miles. This many people said they go 27. So even though miles commuted is not per se a categorical number, I can still create this output. So if you're ever wanting to show how many people responded with a certain response, that would be your bar chart. I could also potentially do a pie chart, not super helpful. A stem and leaf plot might be helpful. So here's my variable. And there's my stem and leaf plot which isn't very helpful because these are all the same numbers. So it's not going to be as helpful as the ones you've seen. Histograms are going to be when you have continuous variables that are, could be like decimals and things like that. So when we're looking at that, you're going to want to use a simple one. You're going to input your variable. And there's my histogram. Notice I only have one variable here. This is always frequency. So some of you are also trying to graph two different things. You can't do that. In any of your graphs, the left-hand side is always going to be frequency because we can't measure the association between two variables in this statistics class. We can measure it in future statistics classes, but not this one. Then I can also go into my descriptive statistics menu. And for this pile of data, I can calculate my data output and my name is going to be in it. So there's my data. Here's my mean. Here's my standard deviation, my median, my range. All of those things are going to be here. Notice my name is in my output. Now, you don't want to just take this table and say, ta-da, here's my eight statistics. You have to validate them and explain them with a citation. So you can say, I think the mean is a better for my claim, because let's assume I'm looking for the mean number of miles someone commutes to school. So if I did that, I'm looking at my data set. I don't have outliers. If I don't have outliers, the mean is the best, the best one to use. Then I'm going to follow that statement up with a citation from one of our readings, from one of our textbooks. You're just going to put the author because that's where you learned that if there's an outlier, the mean is the best one. So I think this is the missing piece for some of you that are struggling with these graphics is that you're entering your raw data here. You're not putting like summarized tables. It's all the values. So then if I wanted to make 
a different graphic. So let's say I ask the question about age. I'm going to put age Brandy Robinson. I'm going to go through and delete all of those values and I'm going to input the age. So, whoops. Now, while this visual might not be what I'm trying to say for my claim, as long as one of them is a good thing for your claim, you have spots for two visuals, then that's okay. So I'm gonna go and put in all of my data for age. Oops. And I'm not gonna paste all the values because I think you guys get the drift here. Then I can go into my graph. I can make my second choice. Let's say I just wanna do a bar chart. It's always simple. You're always gonna put your variable over there. And here's my age distribution. That gives me an idea. These are my people. This is who I surveyed. I surveyed eight people that are 24, eight people are 27, eight people were 31, and that's because I was copying and pasting. And notice at the bottom it says age Brady Robinson, and count or frequency is here because I don't mess with it. So you're not messing with that other axis ever in this project. So I hope you guys find that helpful and maybe make some things click with the mini tab integration in the project. Definitely inbox me if you have questions.